Clifford. Buddy, be nice. Okay? Be nice. Yes. You be nice. Yes. You be nice. He was our bottle baby a couple years ago. In fact, just like almost exactly to the day two years ago. So he is our <laughs> our friendly bull and we kept him and we'll be getting our first crop of calves out of him this year. Clifford. Hello, my name is Delcy, and I am founder of A Life of Heritage, and I love to share information about goats. I love my goat herds, and I encourage you to love your goat herd, and it, you know, a part of that is really being prepared for anything, and that is why I created this video. It is somewhat long. Um, I guess I'm sorry not sorry for that because it's just necessary information if you're going to raise goats and so if you want to have just a good detailed video about what you will need in an emergency situation regardless of if it's a pandemic or if it's just the weekend this video will be your starting point in getting everything together that that you might need in case something happens with your goats it's not fun to have that emergency and be wondering what's going on and what to do and how to do it but when we can act quickly and respond appropriately it changes everything so that is where this video is really coming from and so uh, i hope that you enjoy the information and and so i'm just gonna get into it then I also recorded another video that was released around the time of this one. I was actually going to include them together, but it just ended up being astronomically too long. So I encourage you to click over to that other video about being prepared in emergencies. It isn't the list that is in this video, but it is connected to the thought of being prepared for emergencies and just the, the thought behind that and how it can help you and things that you need to think about. So I encourage you to click on over to that video as well. I guess we're all going back, all going back to the barn now. <laughs> And if you do think of something that, that I don't mention, um, then definitely let me know in the comments. Okay, so I wanted to start with, with one of the most important things. Now, I have here, and, and a lot of you have emailed me and said about Molly's um, herbal formula that she uses for, um, for worms. And I really think, you know, having something like this on hand is very good to support your goat and your goat's health so that they are, uh, and their, their system is less likely to support worms. So if you keep your goat healthy, and that can also include, you know, copper is really important and will help your worms to be less likely to have an overload of worms. So having something like that you, that you'll give your goat on a regular basis to keep them healthy and, and worm free is important. But I also think it's important to have a wormer, a chemical wormer on hand. And so... <laughs> So this is this is something that I have here and so like with this you know I have about half a bottle of this and it, it probably wouldn't hurt for me to even get another bottle. Um, you do need to probably pay attention to like when they expire so you don't want to get too much. I'm probably one of those people that you know yes things expire but <laughs> their general guidelines. Maybe that isn't the wisest, but if it came down to it and you had um, something like a warmer that were expired I, and, and we were in a dire situation, I would still use it. So again, that is where you will use your best informed decision, but having something like this on hand for your goats, I really think is important because worm worms are one of the leading killers in goats. And when you have the perfect year of heat and, and wetness, worms can explode and, and worms can really wreck your, your herd. I really believe that in most cases of a goat being sick, that you can 
um, the underlying cause and issue of that is that they had worms. So they may have died from pneumonia, but if you were to go back and, and figure out that, that they got pneumonia because they were weakened from the worms. So don't let this be something that would happen to you where you don't have something to combat the worms if your goats need it. All right, so your goats might get sick. That's another thing that can happen um, on the weekend or in an emergency situation or, or a crisis, um, maybe even like what we're having now if it gets worse. You know, we don't know what's coming in the future. So uh, I think just having some a few things on hand will be really important. So one of the things... Oh, and I forgot. I just realized that. So uh, one of the things I have in here is, and so I have my uh, penicillin here. Penicillin is something that would be really important to have on hand. Another one that I don't have um, here, I forgot it inside in the fridge, I was going to grab it and I forgot, is Draxin. That is, I have Draxin on hand um, for my goats if they get pneumonia. Pneumonia is another one of those that can kill a goat really quick and is one of the leading killers in goats. You can watch my pneumonia video here and I really, it's important. Now, I wanted to read you this email, uh, like totally made my day. Oh my goodness. I gotta find it here. It blessed me. Uh, I read it to my whole family at breakfast and we all said, oh. Okay, so this is what she said. Hi, I live in the country on almost 20 acres and I recently stumbled onto your YouTube channel where we're searching for anything goat related. We're just starting our journey down the goat trail. And she mentions that she's picking up and getting several goats and adding to her goat herd. So she has, has some um, registered Nubians and she said this Sunday we're gonna be picking up some more. How exciting. And she said, I can't tell you how excited I am. We plan to expand our herd as we can, and we'll probably get another breed or two. But Nubians are my favorite, which I have to agree, I love Nubian ears. Okay, so I'm someone who loves to research and learn anything there is to know about whatever it is I'm interested in, and your channel has become my new addiction. I've been binge watching all of your goat videos, and the information has already saved my little boy's life. About a week ago, I went out to feed in the morning and noticed Apollo had a cough that sounded a little wet. I took its, his temperature, and it was 104.8. I am still in the process of stocking my goat medicine cabinet, so I wasn't prepared, but I called my vet, who I love, and took him right in. He had pneumonia, which because I of you, I already knew. He fixed him right up and he is now good as gold. <sighs> Isn't that relieving and so exciting to hear? I'm telling you, when we are armed with information and when we're prepared and we know what to do, we can save our goats. That is the perfect example. So thank you. Thank you so much for sending me that that email, Carmen, and, and thank you for the picture that you included. You are very right, I love it. I love to connect names with faces. Uh, you know, when I, when somebody or a friend talks about somebody that they work for, you know, or an employee or a, somebody that they work with or a new friend that they have, I'll say like, where's the picture? I need to see the picture. And that's one of the first things I have to ask for because I just love to see faces and, and connect. So if you want to email me and send me your pictures of you with your goats. I love that. <laughs> so thank you. Okay, so now moving on. Okay, another one that is really important to have is banamine. Uh, that is something that you will find is kind of a lifesaver for your goats because when your goat is in pain, when they're having rumen related issues, when they're um, like when Kira several years ago, she got into the grain, she was in obvious distress. We, we were working through the bloat. Again, you can watch the bloat video here and that is another bonus that I added to my goat binder. So uh, we worked through all of that and banamine was one of the things that I gave her. So it, it alleviates pain, it reduces inflammation and, and fever. So that's an important thing to have. Another thing to have is thiamine. Again, this can be a lifesaver for your goat. If they are off feed, their rumen stops producing thiamine and that is completely and totally dangerous. So you need this for a sick goat and, re and if they're having rumen related issues, truly, you need this. So the fortified vitamin B, 
is, um, and it needs to be fortified because it needs to have enough of the thiamine in it uh, to be effective. Goats need a lot of it. And if they don't use it, they just they just go to the bathroom and it comes out of them. So you, it's very hard to, to overdose that. But this is what you'll need if your goats get anemia. Anemia and worms are very uh, related or parasites of any kind can cause anemia. This will help get them out of the woods with that. So this is another thing that's very important to have on hand. Nutri-drench. I'm trying to think if I have Nutri-drench. Oh, you know what? I don't have any Nutri-drench on hand. I, now that I'm thinking back, pretty sure I used that the last bit of it last year. So <laughs> I need to get some of that on hand because as kidding season is coming, that can be just a real booster for the mama goats having just gone through a huge thing. It's a nutrient boost for them that can really perk up a goat that's not eating uh, a baby goat that's just a little weak and needs a boost. Um, so having that on hand is really important as well for any sick goat or a goat that just needs that boost of energy. Okay, so Spectum Scour Halt. Where is that? Where's my pink stuff here? So this is SpectoGuard. I think that this is great to have on hand because if your goat has any diarrhea generally, whether it's a baby goat that with the uh, coccidiosis or uh, or uh, an adult goat, if they have diarrhea, this generally clears it up. And remember with diarrhea, you need to really think about, uh, before you are giving something to just make it go away, you need to think about why they have it in the first place. So diarrhea is just a symptom of what's really going on. So just always keep that in mind. Activated charcoal. This is something that we have, I always have to come and steal some when I'm making our toothpaste for, uh, for our family. I use it on our toothpaste though. So. We have lovely black teeth when we <laughs> brush our teeth. And, um, but it also can be great for goats and when they get into something that they shouldn't. So this will be something that absorbs the toxins if they have gotten into uh, eating something that they shouldn't. All right, electrolytes. I don't have any made up right now. I do have uh, a, a printout uh, in, in the goat binder. It's a part of that. Um, something that you can um, make your own or you can buy electrolytes from just tractor supply or or something like that so it's either or you can buy some and i actually have in the past had i don't think i do now because i used them all i did have little packets you know you can buy them and mix them up yourself just from tractor supply okay probios now i have one of these big tubes here. I also have a smaller tube and actually what I found because these are kind of hard to deal with um you can get one of those big like caulking guns I think they are and I just haven't never done that I should um, because these are hard to deal with but what I've done with these is I've actually reused these so I'll get this big bottle I'll squirt it into here because you can measure out uh, how much to give your goat and and this you can you know put it up to here and then give however much your goat weighs you can watch the video about how to weigh your goat here and um, and then give your goat that way that kind of is a, a hack that I've done before Okay, red cell. I don't have the red cell bottle out here. I've been using it and keeping it inside because it's frozen and, and it's hard when it's frozen. So that's something I don't have in here. I do get it in a bottle that looks kind of like this and it says red cell on it. That is great for anemia. And um, so that's an important thing to have on hand as well. Okay, tetanus antitoxin might be something that you want to think about having as well. Now, if you do give your goats uh, the CD, CD and T shot, I'll link the, the video about it here. Not everyone does. You don't have to, but some do. It is totally up to you. So you can watch about that to figure out where you fall and what you want to do. If you don't give it, having the tetanus antitoxin on hand, I mean, if your goat were to get that and you hadn't vaccinated, you will definitely want to, to get that in them as quickly as possible. Also epinephrine. So if you were to ever give your goat something that they had a, re a reaction to, having an ep having epinephrine on hand would be really helpful. And I have some. I actually have it in my B my B container and um, have it there. So I do have some. It's just not out with my goat stuff. Having bandages, wraps, gauze. I think that you know all having those things just ready on hand 
is really important. I also have some ointment um, goo that, you know, when, when my goats are, get sick, you can, I can have them and I already have them uh, and I can use if they get injured. Um, having something like hoof and heel, and I have hoof and heel somewhere, but I haven't been able to find it. I'm hoping when I, which I don't know how, unless it fell behind something, I have it somewhere. <laughs> but having hoof and heel, like if you were to be trimming your goat, and uh, and and to nick it, you would want to use something. You'd want to use blood stop. That's another thing on the list. So if you have, if you need to stop blood, have something on hand that will do that. And then hoof and heel can help with that because that is another way. If you um, trim your goats and there's tetanus in your area, they can get um, tetanus through those open wounds in um, in their hooves. If you are kidding, you need to have a few things on hand. Now, I did have a comment once on, on my video about having a, having kidding <laughs> supplies already. And he said, in all my years of raising goats, I've never, I bought all this stuff for my kidding kit and I've never had to use it. And I, that's awesome. That is exactly what you want for your goats. You want to be raising goats that can have kids without any problems and, and don't need your assistance. That is the best. Uh, but if things do go wrong, you want to have some things on hand. So you're going to want to have some and old towels if you needed to dry off a goat, um, a baby, and get them cleaned up. That is always helpful. And you don't have to use your nice towels if you already have the rags ready and they're clean. <laughs> that just makes it easier. The iodine uh, is very useful in cleaning their umbilical cords. Colostrum replacement or um, saved colostrum is really important too. So when when your goats uh, have their kids, you can milk them a bit and save some of that colostrum. Just put it in the freezer in case you need it the next year or at some time during that kidding season. Is a really wise idea but you can also get colostrum um, that you can mix up and give to the to the kids as well if needed okay where was I um, so bottles and nipples I have I have right here these nipples I have found these to be the very best and um, basically they just screw onto a um, just one of uh, a plastic like water bottle like in the we don't drink pop so we've always just gotten the water bottles that are um, maybe the 12 ounce or 16 ounce and these will screw right on it's super great and and it's um they i don't know it's just very inexpensive and great and these work the best sometimes you do need to look at the the, the hole at the top needs a little bit of help sometimes but i've generally not had problems with them so they would work for, these have worked for my, the lambs that we've raised and, and some goat kids that we've had to, to um, bottle feed and, and even a pig. We even raised a little pig on this, so <laughs> they work great. All right, OB lube. Uh, where is this? So I have some of this and I'm actually almost done, but this will be very useful um, for if you do need to, to go into your goat to help out. You want some surgical scrub to really wash, 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 wash up. Put some of this on so it goes in easily. You can also use this when you're taking your goat's temperature. Put this on the end and it'll just slip right in. So this is handy to have on hand. Gloves, you want to have some gloves. If you do um, go in, that is also very good. If you can get the longer gloves, um, that is something too that would be helpful to have on hand. All right, so now I'm gonna move on to milking. As we are entering into this crisis that we're having in America and the store shelves are empty of most everything, I was wishing that I had my goats on a staggered breeding schedule. I just last week stopped milking for the next couple of months, which is very, very sad because we're now out of milk and um, I, I actually do have some a bit saved in the freezer, but it was a weird year and I didn't, I don't know why, I didn't get any saved as much as I would like. So that is very sad. <laughs> And so uh, that's actually one of my goals then is uh, in the future, I'm going to be working on a staggered breeding schedule so that I'll have a goat in milk at all times or around the year, at least most of the year. And we may not have enough for other people, but at least for my family, we'll have enough for us to drink and and keep us in milk. And so I think that if, I mean, if you're, if you are already milking, you probably have these supplies on hands, on hand. So a stainless steel milking pail or bucket. Um, I already have one, so that's not something that, unless it were to break, 
um, which I guess is the handles might, the little handle things might break at some point. Um, but at this point, it's not at that point. Uh, and then you'll want a funnel and filters. So filters would be the thing that you would run out of at some point. So you want to have enough filters on hand that suddenly you're not thinking, oh no, I don't have filters. But <laughs> I do have a post that I wrote that I can link below that is I made some filters out of um, some um, old bedding that I had. It was this lacy kind of, uh, well, it was a very tight-knit um, bedding that we were no longer using. And I made some milk filters out of those just for those times that we might run out or need them. So that may be something you can look into too, is something that's reusable like that. Okay, so glass jars for storage. Iodine would be something, you know, I, the, I have some of this here. Now this would be, I already mentioned that for the kidding. Um, it can be useful for lots of things. I also use iodine to clean my goats before milking. So I water it down just a bit and use that to clean my goats. So it's handy and, and to have some, have an extra bottle on hand um, would be a, a good idea because it is definitely useful. Mastitis tests would also be wise to have just in case you um, want to just double check that your goats um, do or don't have mastitis. Okay, so then there's some general supplies that I think are just wise to have on hand. A thermometer is the number one most essential thing that you need to have if you own goats, a thermometer. Have one, have two, just in case the one is not working. And my, my thermometer is right here, so just ha go and get a thermometer put it away, put it in your thing so you know where it's at at all times. This, If your goat is sick, this is what you need. All right, a bander. I guess I didn't dig that out, but a bander to castrate your goats. <laughs> now, in times of crisis, you don't, if you end up raising goats, you potentially could be using your goats, and it's a hard thing to think about. We've never eaten any of our goats, so, but if, the, if that ever were, you know, we were to get to that point, we would, we would do that. Um, but you don't want to be raising lots and lots of little bucklings um, <laughs> until that point. So having ca a castrator um, and then um, the, the little green bands, the green Cheerios, uh, having enough of those on hand to last a while would be really helpful. You wouldn't want to be searching for those in case everything collapsed. You can watch how to castrate a goat and when to castrate your goat right here um, in these videos. So be sure to check those out. Okay, so minerals, 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 minerals are so important. <laughs> Watch this video for minerals, um, about minerals, your complete mineral guide. And I want to say for you, this is something that we have started to really take seriously as a family. When there are times of crisis in health, when everyone's getting sick or potentially getting sick, we need to be taking care of ourselves. And so we as a family are taking some really good vitamins and minerals and they are really easy to take and that's what I love about them. So if you are curious about top-notch nutrition that you can take in your family that gives you uh, an awesome array of all of the vitamins and minerals that you need that are water-soluble and fat-soluble uh, for that, I mean, really check them out. I'll put the link below and you can check it out. So minerals, goats, you need to have minerals on hand. Don't let it be where you run out and then you can't get any. So having enough mineral on hand for a while is important. And baking soda as well. Uh, I actually have that is in, in my little container over here. Um, I bought a 50 pound bag of, uh, of um, baking soda. It's very cheap at the feed store. You can just buy a big hulking 50 pound bag and, and then it lasts quite a while. Copper boluses if needed in your area. Now I need to give copper boluses four times a year and so I need to have copper boluses on hand. And and you know I noticed something today. Um, it was actually shared on Facebook and I don't know if it's true because I had just I guess a couple days ago ordered something on Amazon and they said Amazon has said that they're not going to be shipping anything unless it is absolutely necessary and essential. So you know it's possible that things can shut down and things won't be mailed out. And if I needed to give my copper bullets and I didn't have any, that can become a whoops, I should have been more prepared. And selenium as well. So uh, that is, if I think it's called Bose. I have some back here. 
<laughs> digging for it. So if you need selenium, having some of this on hand, um, you can get that from your veterinary. If you are selenium deficient, um, that is something to have as well if you think that you do. So hoof trimming supplies, having um, all of these things ready to go um, and where you know where they're at there. It's just having, you don't want your goats to have bad hooves that can just lead to so many other problems. They can get hoof rot, hoof rot. And if you're going to have goats, don't have good, healthy feet. <laughs> they can't get anywhere. So take care of your goat's feet. All right, diatomaceous earth is another one. So this, you can get them, you'll either see them in like this size here, and, and actually right here, I'm not gonna move this bag, but this bag right here, I believe it's 50 pounds. It's, it's a large, oh no, it says 20 pounds. It's a 20 pound bag of diatomaceous earth. So, I, you know, it is so handy for so many things, for your goats, your chickens, all kinds of things. So having that on hand and buying a big bag of it, it doesn't cost much and having it on hand is great to have. So, all right. So now this is something that I don't have on hand. It might be something you want to get on hand. I did a, a two video series on CL, Cassius lymphadenitis. I think I said that right. And if you want to know about CL, it's very serious. It's very scary. You need to learn about what it is, what to look for and what to do about it. And if, we, if it came down to it, and I, you know, I imagine, uh, so imagining <laughs> end of the world scenarios and everything were shut down, we couldn't get anything, and, and our, your goats suddenly started getting these abscesses, but they were your only goats. There's no way to get more goats. You need your goats to survive for milk and for meat. And they're starting to get CL. You might, and, and if you know it's in your area as well, so you may know that your area is prone to getting CL and, um, and you may have had it in the past, it may be worth it to look into getting formalin. I'm not gonna go into what that is in this video. That's not what it is. So if you wanna learn about um, what that does, what that is, you can watch that here. It may be a way that you could, if you had it on hand, you'd be ready to save your goats and be able to keep using them that way. Okay, silence. I mentioned about silence in my last two videos about some lice. My goats got lice <laughs> and I was using diatomaceous earth and one of them, poor giraffe, she just couldn't, I don't know, she was really inflicted by them. Silence would be something to have on hand, I think. I'm glad that I have this just in case um, because lice happen. And so you don't, they really can do a lot of damage. So don't let your goats um, get damaged too much by the lice. And then you're just gonna have to decide for hay stores and grain, what you have room for, for hay and grain. And you know, for us, we um, will start in, in July, we will start haying our hay and, and um, building up, beefing up our stores of hay. Last haying year was just awful. <laughs> and we hope and pray that this next haying year will be better. And so having hay on hand, having grain on hand, um, enough to last you a bit, I think, I know for me, that is a security button. And, and so <laughs> it's just like, it gives me great relief to know that I have enough hay and won't be needing to hunt for hay in the middle of a snowstorm or in the middle of winter or in the middle of a crisis. You know, my goats would survive without grain and I don't give them much grain. It would probably, like I give it mostly during the milking because that's what keeps them busy while I'm milking them. But you know, if we ran out, we would figure out and, and we couldn't get any more we would survive. My goats would survive. They would learn and just have to learn to stand and be good while I was milking them. So that wouldn't be the end of the world as far as the grain. But as far as hay, especially up north here, we don't have pasture at all. There is absolutely nothing green, nothing living out in the pastures or anywhere. Uh, and we don't have, you know, where they can get out and be eating the evergreens and, and things like that. So we have to have hay stores and, and that I think is an important thing to have and to think about what is it, how much do you need to have on hand? How much do you want to have on hand? You'll just have to make that decision. So I have given you a complete overview of the emergency items that I would have on hand for my goats and, and suggestions for you. If you would like to get this bonus, 
along with the goat binder mailed to your address and you know i this is so exciting i've been selling so many of these that i ran out of my magnets that go along with it and i have had to reorder so i haven't and they're coming tomorrow and so i haven't and for the last couple of days i haven't been able to mail them because i'm waiting for these magnets to come in the mail so that is exciting so you'll want to and i just need to be more prepared to have magnets, enough magnets that I'm reordering um, often enough to keep them on hand, right? Be prepared. If you would like to get your goat binder, please do that. The link is below. You won't regret it, I'm telling you. I have so many people email that me that say, this is a lifesaver. In fact, let me show you what they say. For instance, Ruth says, thank you for my binder, very informative, especially the back section. So the front part is just record keeping for, for your goats and when you do treat them for things and when, you know, your reproduction schedule and when they all the kids that they have and all just the important record keeping is in the front in the back is the health and uh, health medical information that, that you'll want um, want to have and so she said I'm sliding them into protective sleeves and the other pages are great too uh, and so a lot of people are sliding them into those you know protective sleeves um, like like these um, but for myself I actually did because I'm a home school mom and I have um, a laminator and it's fun to laminate I did actually laminate mine so uh, that is what all of this in the back is I believe now you are set you are totally set for any emergency if you get all of this together you are ready your goats are ready and we'll be so thankful that you are their owner so thank you so much for this is a lot of information <laughs> thank you for joining me and taking this time to to learn uh, from me to learn about your goats I, it just blesses me so much to know that that we can help each other raise healthy goats that we can help save each other's goats and 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 bring a good balanced life um, to our goats and ourselves so thank you for watching this video with me if you made it to the end here i hope you have an excellent day stay safe out there don't panic and and, and remember where your trust really needs to lie i know who my trust is in and and that's enough so have a great day and we'll see you in that next video